Hello, I would like to give you three exercises that are dance exercises. They are both dance moves and they are exercises that will help you with your balance and your muscle tone in your legs and a little bit in your core as well. So, here we go. We're going to start with one that's basically a rond de jambe. We're going to take a step forward on either leg, put all the weight forward. Make sure that when you take the step, your hips are over your foot and your shoulders over your hips. Everything's stacked and in line. Your back leg is then going to straighten before you sweep it round the side. So showing you frontwards, I'm going to step all my weight forwards, back leg straightens first and then sweeps around the outside to the front. Once I've swept it forwards, I'm going to take my weight onto that front foot and then the new back leg is going to sweep round. And then we go in reverse, sweep it back, step on it, sweep it back, step on it. Of course, if you've got more space and you want to keep trying, go forward further and come back as many times as you want. Now it's worth saying for all these exercises, we are predominantly on one leg over the other. So if you want to take it really simple, you can hold on to something, maybe the back of a chair uh, or your kitchen workshop whilst you're practicing these. And then a progression would be to just have something near that you could grab hold of if you're losing your balance and feeling wobbly. And then progression again could be just doing it free, hands free, so you've got nothing to support you other than your own ability to balance. So we're stepping forward on one leg or the other and do try on both. And think about turning out the toes. We always have more stability when we have a 10 o'clock and a 2 o'clock position with our feet. So then our hips can go one way, our momentum can go another way, and our knee can also bend just to move in micro movements, small movements that can just help us keep stable when we're wobbling or if we're feeling wobbly. So we straight it onto the first leg, and then we allow the supporting leg to bend because the more we bend it, A, the more balance we have, and B, the longer and bigger the sweep looks. Try to straight, straighten that back leg as early as possible and dig the big toe into the floor. Corner of the big toe pushing down slightly and that would just keep a really nice poise all the way around and help encourage that pointed uh, toe and straight leg if you're really pushing into the floor. And it helps with, with balance a bit as well. So if you're pushing into the floor, there's a bit of friction there. So if you do feel wobbly, you can push back off that foot to keep your balance over the supporting leg. I try and have laces facing directly up or at an upward forward angle so that I don't jar my hip. If I turn my laces sideways, then by the time I get to here, not only does it look a bit funny, but it starts jarring, it starts trapping some cartilage in there or something, and it doesn't feel comfortable. So think about pointing the toe, keeping big toe touch shape all the way around before you then step onto that leg, straighten the back leg before bending the front leg. So you always have this nice look, this nice straight line and some poise as you're going around. Another progression, of course, if you're not holding on, is to use those arms. They can go with the leg or they can go opposite the leg. You might be going backwards with an arm going forwards or upwards. And think about matching the movement. So if you've got a nice sweepy, floaty movement because it matches music you're dancing to, then it would only make sense to have sweepy, floaty arms while you're doing it. So have a practice. Another progression, if you want to take it to a much more advanced level, if you're doing turns in your dancing, Generally speaking, when we're turning, we can put a leg down to stop or the heel of the, the leg we're turning. But basically, the more friction we have on the floor, the quicker and more easily we can stop. So you can do a turn and you can add that ronde to the end. So turning the leg on this instance will be the one underneath me. I then sweep the other leg and that helps me stop the turn as well. But I can actually do it for the second half of the spin to come to a nice gradual but smooth looking ending and try it on both legs, of course. Move number two, we're gonna pulse the hip. So we're gonna stand on one leg, everything stacked up above the supporting leg as before. And the same as the rondi position, I'm turning my toes out, so the laces are pointing slightly up, and I've got a nice straight leg pointed toe. So I'm going to be lifting the leg slightly upwards off the floor. It doesn't have to be a high lift, but rather going side on, and rather going directly behind, I'm gonna try and angle it diagonal behind me. So this way I have a nice attitudinal look. So from here, as I lift, it's quite hard work and you should notice the muscles working on the glute meds, so outside of the body, just above the bum. And from there, we're thinking about just doing a few pulses. And if you're doing it for exercise, then obviously you can do it until you get really tired and change legs a couple of times, trying to do the same number of repetitions per leg. Uh, but if you're not doing it for dance, then it's helpful to have a mirror because generally speaking, when you lift this leg, the body wants to pendulum 
with the leg and it's easier to tip the whole body to put some weight in opposition to the heavy leg you're lifting. Another trap people fall into is they try and use all these muscles down the side to pull their leg up, which of course does not look quite as elegant as it could. So what I like to do is use the mirror to try and isolate, notice if there's movement in my body and try to minimise any movement from my shoulders downwards and just make it all about the leg. Change sides of course, as regularly as you need to. And if you want to add some styling arms, if you're not holding on to something, then think about the line of your leg being matched by the line of your arms, which obviously you might not want to move the arms with the leg, but the leg then moves by itself. And you can try that on both sides. That's a very good workout for the glute meds and they really support our balancing um, and our other core muscles are all supported together. They work together um, very well to help stabilize us in our dancing. And then the last one is going to be some in and out kicks. So I'm going to stand on one leg and I'm going to take the other leg to face in. So all the movement from the hip to turn the knee in and the leg faces across towards the other leg. I'm then going to sweep it across the floor before taking it as far as I can, before I fall or tip off balance, twist it the other way and sweep. So it's two actions, a directional and a rotational. Okay. When you've done it softly and gently for a while, you can build up to putting a bit more rotation in there. For me personally, I have quite tight hips. So something I sometimes do is a quick exercise on the floor and I will just take my legs wide, take one knee inwards, and as I pull the inside knee to the floor, I'm getting a good stretch. If I feel like I need a bit more weight and leverage on the stretch, I'll take my other heel across and use the weight of my other leg to pull down trying to keep my chest up and my back up straight as well. Once I've done that on both legs, I do find that I have a bit more flexibility in the hip and that just allows me to make a nice big movement. Now, of course, balance is more difficult here because your leg is swinging and twisting and turning. Uh, for me, because I've said I've got tight hips, I compensate slightly rather than leaving it all internal. So the more flexibility in my leg to hip, ball and socket joint, the better the move looks. I add a bit of a hip twist with the movement. So when my leg's going in this direction, I turn my hips towards it. And when my leg's going in this direction, I twist my hips. So you might notice it's quite subtle, but you might notice that I'm cheating a little bit to make it a bigger movement and look nice. Of course, the more movement you do, the more likely it is to send you off balance. So with a bit of practice holding on if you need to, you can get good at this. And then when you want to graduate off the floor, it just makes it a bit more fluid. And we're trying first not to speed up, but to try and blend in the directional and the rotational movements so that it looks more fluid. Not necessarily faster, but just smoother looking. And then if you can, speed it up as well, even better. You can add a bit of a flick on the end, or you can add a kick, and then put it into your dance moves. So give those a go. Of course, balancing, holding on is very useful. Try it on both legs. There's nothing worse than having one leg that can balance really nicely and do turns and the other leg you're always stumbling. So do practice on both legs and of course practice makes progress. Now if you like the video please leave a thumbs up uh, and you can subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments uh, or any future videos you'd like me to make then drop me a comment and let me know and uh, you might get your wish.